Hey guys, this is Caleb Pike with DSR Video Shooter and another podcast. Uh, it's 2012. Hope the year is going well for you guys so far. Um, looking forward to seeing what uh, we'll be doing on the site. Hopefully you've subscribed to the new newsletter. Uh, we're going to be giving away all kinds of stuff starting with an Alzo uh, camera rig at the 31st of this month. So go ahead and make sure you sign up for that. We'll be giving something away at the end of every month. It's going to be rad. So, uh, but to start the year off, I want to share with you kind of a something new I'm using in the area of rigs. As you shoot, especially if you're getting started like me, you kind of things evolve as you move from just shooting one thing to multiple different things. But uh, you start to fall into kind of in line with what um, you find yourself shooting most of the time. And most of the time, what I shoot is more of interview style stuff, and then we shoot some B-roll. So whether that be a little little documentary piece, or if I'm just one shooter for one like unit or whatever, whatever um, I end up shooting an interview and then getting B-roll. And I've found it's difficult to find a solution that works well when I'm on sticks, and then quickly switching to something that I can move around, get all kinds of different angles, and and wrap up shop real fast. Because a lot of time the B-roll section gets cut down because the interview went too long or whatever. Um, and I've stumbled across something that I find really cool and um, has worked really well in the last uh, two months or so. So I want to share that with you guys. And it's using pretty affordable stuff. And this isn't like a rig that you'd find anywhere. It's just using essentially three three components that you could pick up on like B&H and Amazon. And uh, this is what I came up with. And essentially what it is, is it's a um, quick release system underneath the camera and then using a friction arm and a handle. That's at the heart of this this whole thing. Uh, and I, I've always been looking for a top handle solution to uh, to use when I'm either carrying the camera around or getting lower angle stuff. Uh, and I've always had a hard time finding something small, light, and compact. I hate these huge, like, Red Rock Micro C cage things, Zakudo's giant box thing. Um, I know JJ Kim. He has a ton of stuff he attaches. JJ Kim from Orange Wedding Films. He he has to have all kinds of stuff for his audio. So he uses, I think it's called the K-Tech cage. But for me, it's, that's all too big. It's way too big. So these friction arms are rated to hold about 10 pounds. You can pick these things up for like 20 to 30 bucks. Um, check out the website. I'll have links to everything I'm talking about in this this show. Um, that's about the price on these. And they, they obviously they're friction arms. You can move them to different positions. Uh, so I found that this works really nice to just come up from the base plate, which we're gonna talk about in a second, um, and then attaching a handle. These are just two male quarter 20 bolts on either end of this. So you just tighten that sucker down and it doesn't go anywhere. And so it's pretty, this is a beast of a lens I have on here right now. It's the Canon 70 and this is a Takina 28 to 70. It's pretty big, it's, it's pretty heavy. So this, this whole thing with this master monster base plate is probably coming in around five pounds or so, uh, which isn't you know maxing out the supposable specs on this. So that's, that's what I have here. And underneath the camera, right now I'm using Cinevate's Simplis. Um, they, you can build this thing to have like rails and a giant shoulder pad and the whole nine yards. But I just have the heart of the system, which is a chunk of metal that accepts a Manfrotto um, like 503 style quick release plate. And it has tons of quarter 20 uh, threads all around. And I'll show some close-ups so you can see a little closer. But what's cool about this as opposed to other Manfrotto quick release plates is that you can take the camera on and off with coming from the top. So um, like most Manfrotto uh, quick release plates and tripods, you can slide the camera forward. But this thing's awesome because you can come from the top. So here I can just pull it right out and uh, switch hands here just snap it right down. And so that's pretty slick. Uh, I, f I really like it. It is a little expensive. I think it comes in at like between 200 and $230. Um, 
but it's a very flexible piece of gear and um, it has a little more weight to the whole thing, which kind of helps steady it. Uh, and so I really like that a lot. But you don't have to get this thing to get this style set up. You could go out and um, I saw this from Cheesy Cam. Um, M over there first shared this, so he definitely gets credit for it. Um, it's a like a complete copy of the Manfrotto Kirkulis plate, uh, but it's sold from Calumet uh, Photography, so you can buy from them for a much lower price. I think it's thirty dollars or so, thirty-five bucks um, per plate, and that comes with the quick release um, plate that goes on your camera, as well as a block that the plate slides on and underneath it you can attach it to a tripod or a rig or whatever um, but that has a quarter 20 and a 3 8 thread so you could uh, use another friction arm coming off the side and put a top handle on that um, so so there is an affordable route you don't have to spend over $200 for this thing you can get one for 35 bucks which is great and then the handle you can really use anything this is a handle I picked up from uh, express35.com and it's actually you can see from the side here it's really meant to take um, a 15 millimeter rod but I took the bolt for tightening it down on a rod I took that bolt off and then it screws directly onto the end of um, the, the arm here and uh, that gives me enough height and it works really well. It's a really nice grip. I like it a lot. Um, very sturdy. But you could get any grip, really. So if you already have one, if as long as you have a female quarter 20 somewhere on that thing, you could attach it to the friction arm. Um, I think Cinevate sells another handle, and I can show you a configuration where that's on there, and, and that comes in around $30 for that handle. Um, so there's a couple options for that, or just use the friction arm by itself. Um, so you'll see here I actually have another friction arm coming off of the side of the camera and that can be used as a second handle. And the beauty of DSLRs is they already have a really great handle here. Canon and Nikon and all those guys, they put a lot of time into getting that ergonomically uh, comfortable and I love the one in the 7D. So these other cages where I have two handles way out here, doesn't make sense. I've already got a great one right here that gives me access to all my buttons. So just give me another handle on the other side and now I have kind of a U-boat situation. Uh, but you could put other things on here. I put my small HD monitor on here. You could put a, um, like a Zacuto EVF if you wanted to do you know, something with an eyepiece, um, an H4N if you're doing audio. But this, uh, really the, the top handle with the quick release plate is such a great way to be doing stuff so this is kind of how I'd be rocking if I was doing like b-roll um, now let's say I want to throw this all on a monopod what I've done is on the bottom of this whole base plate I have another top uh, plate quick release plate so I could just take this whole thing one second and grab my monopod this is the uh, Manfrotto 561 BHDV monopod this whole thing will just slide right on there and then I can lock it down and now I have this whole thing on a monopod and I could do whatever I needed to do with that let's say I don't want to have all this stuff I just want the camera it's just as simple because I'm standardizing on that 503 base plate I can just pop the camera off of my little rig here And now I just slide just the camera and a lens, and bam. Now we're just doing uh, body and a lens. This is much, much smaller, as you can see. I could put my, my uh, uh, you know, Z Finder or whatever on the back of this thing and go in for something like that. And this is much lighter, smaller, easier to work with. And then if I need to get something super low and I want to switch back, it's as simple as, hold on, setting that down. Grabbing the rig again, bam. Now we're doing uh, low angle stuff or whatever you need to do. This whole thing can now also go on my tripod and I have that somewhere else right now, but I do have right here 
Cinevate slider and I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Boom, I can just set that whole thing right on the slider. Again, if I don't want the handles, the camera alone can go on the slider. And that's really the beauty of um, a system like this is you are choosing a base plate and that's what you're gonna set as your standard and you're gonna put that on everything. So I have that same plate um, on my glide cam. I have that same plate on my tripod. It's on the slider and of course the monopod I use is already Manfrotto so that already takes the same plate. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch and slowly build this thing and show you what you can do um, by using that quick release system. Uh, again, as you're watching this, make sure you're on dslrvideoshooter.com and you're able to look at all the stuff um, that I'm talking about and you'll find the links to all that stuff so you can kinda walk with me and see what I'm using to put this together. All right, so these are the parts we're working with. Um, there's three major components to this whole thing. Uh, the first is right here in the middle, our quick release plate. Um, when you buy this, you will have two parts. You will have the part that attaches to your camera, which I'm going to set over here for now, and the base piece. And these are designed so that, um, let's say you have a tripod that doesn't have or doesn't take this kind of plate, you could just attach this thing right onto your tripod, all right? Um, so this is really at the heart of the system. We have the two... Uh, female threads here and I'll get a closer shot but essentially there is one quarter inch and one three-eighths and what I did is because I'm using uh, accessories that are quarter inch I went ahead and got an adapter I actually had a few lying around but that that uh, it goes from uh, three-eighths to quarter inch and I went ahead and screwed that in there so now I equivalently I, I have two um, quarter inches right on the side of this plate. The other side there isn't any. Um, and that's the what's so cool about that Cinevate one, which I which I have over here, is that there's um, two here, three on the front, three on the back, and then another two on the other side. You see, you have tons of mounting points on this thing. Um, but uh, we're gonna build this with this plate, which is a lot more affordable. Um, and uh, will be just fine for us. Okay, so cool. What? So that's that's really at the heart of everything, and uh, we'll start there. Uh, the other thing is the articulating friction arm. Again, you can pick this up for like twenty to thirty dollars, um, and what comes with it is these little, um, these almost they're, they're threaded washers essentially, and uh, it comes with a bunch of other stuff. But these are primarily all you're going to need is the actual arm. And two of those puppies and then over here I have a Cinevate handle this is one of the more affordable ones it does have that grip texture um, that you can see there and uh, it's nice maybe I don't know if everyone's gonna like that but it feels incredibly solid um, it's kind of got a super it's the same material that Cinevate uses for their little uh, spheres if you're familiar with those um, it's incredibly compact very durable plastic and then you have a female quarter 20 and a male quarter 20 and it comes with another one of those threaded washer dealios and we'll leave that on there and there's some cool stuff we can do with this that I'll show you later so those three things arm plate and handle um, so right off the bat what I'm gonna do is I already put my I pre-cooked my uh, plate here got that on the bottom of the camera um, so that easily slides onto the plate and what's cool is it does have that locking mechanism so you have a couple options and then on this side you you tighten down the knob uh, something to be aware of is on this knob you can see that it's going to hit the body of the camera um, so what I recommend doing is get get it so that you only have to do half a turn and it locks the camera down that way you're not gonna have to bump it up against the camera it does have that ratcheting so you can, you can ratchet it, but it's pretty difficult. And uh, that's where these things are problematic is, let's say you bolt this onto a flat surface. Now you have zero wiggle room between the camera and whatever it is you're attaching it to. So there's, these aren't perfect, but for our situation, these, these will work really well. So 
um, just something to keep in mind as you're putting this together. So I'm going to take it back off for the camera over here. So what I'm going to start by doing is taking these uh, little threaded thumb screws that come with the uh, with the arm. I'm going to put one on each end, just like that, and that'll add another flat surface, which should add even more strength to these things. I'm going to go ahead and thread it um, onto one of these uh, quarter twenties. And now this is where it kind of subjective, um, depending on what lens you're using, what kind of camera you have, and what kind of handle you're going to end up using. You may want to experiment with with which one of these two threads you're going to be putting this thing into. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the one on the front, and there is a little insert here on this plate, so that's the front of the camera, lens side. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on right now, like so, tighten it down, and I need to ratchet it. I don't know how well this thing works. Pretty good, the ratchet works pretty good. Okay, so bam, there's our camera lens. I'm going to go ahead and loosen my knob, and now we have the flexible arm. And this is where you can kind of experiment with where it's going to end up. Um, what's different from this handle and the one I'm using on this one over here is that this handle, I'm going to have to attach it via this quarter 20, and uh, that's going to take up more, uh, I'll have less angles to work with, whereas this guy, it attaches um, at an angle here, which uh, instead of coming in right right at the, at the end of the handle, it's coming from a different side, so that gives me a little more flexibility. So we'll see what this is going to look like here. I'm going to go ahead and just loosely throw the handle on. You can do kind of a scorpion style thing where it's like coming off the back, you know, but uh, depending on what your display is set up, that may not work as well. So you kind of fidget it with it and get it to something like maybe that. Um, I like just enough room so my knuckle isn't banging against the camera when I, uh, when I go ahead and grab this thing. So then what I do is I get it to where it kind of stays by itself, um, but I can still adjust it and do a little more fine tuning and tighten her down. Real nice and snug. So that's pretty nice right there. Um, so you can, I actually have it backwards, so you usually you hold it like this, but uh, because it attaches on this end, I'm gonna go ahead and put that toward the front of the camera. And that works pretty good. Um, very sturdy, nice little, little setup. And what's cool with uh, Having it on this side of the camera is, at least for me, I grip on the, the grip side and my other hand uh, goes like this. And this is how I focus. I trained it, trained myself to do it this way instead of like this so that I, I get real comfortable with which direction the lens throws when I focus. And what's awesome is this arm adds a point of contact. And it's incredibly comfortable to just rest my palm right up against that friction arm and now use that. Um, to, to focus my lens and you can you can grip it like that too so there's so many it just makes the camera so especially for a video so much more ergonomically friendly and uh, I know a lot of people shoot with just the body and the lens I've never been a big fan of that just because getting low it's it's a lot more difficult than just just having a handle and you can do so much more so the final step with this is I would recommend you go out and get another plate like this and attach this thing to the very bottom so that it's going to live there. And that way, this whole thing can now go on a tripod, can go on a slider or whatever other uh, gear or rigs. If you have a huge map box setup, let's say you really need a map box for certain shooting situations, you could build out rails, map box, and then this whole thing could pop off and then slide right back on. Um, but but this to me is beautiful. I love shooting like this. It's very minimal. It's a very 
uh, inconspicuous, but super versatile um, setup. And where these things really shine is when you're shooting on like a T3i or a 60D with the flip out screen. Because then your screen's sitting out here and you're doing all kinds of crazy nonsense, getting to all your low shots. Um, whereas me with the 7D, I really need uh, to get my small HD monitor on here. Um, and that's what's cool with this particular handle is you have this male bolt coming off of the back here. So you could put one of those small uh, ball mounts and uh, put a display or whatever on this right here. So um, that, that, that offers another option. And remember, you still have this one female quarter inch. So you could put another friction arm coming off to the side. You could uh, put your display over there, H4N, whatever. So I hope that's uh, helpful to you guys. I love this thing, and uh, this is a really affordable setup. So for under $100, you get your friction arm, you get your base plate, and your handle, and you're all ready to roll. I would encourage you to consider possibly switching, um, if you haven't already, to standardizing to something like this. This will make life so much easier, um, especially when you start using different types of gear and you're needing to switch the camera over. Stay tuned for more stuff from the site and we look forward to seeing you guys over there.